Good morning, everyone. This is Batushki. I'm making just a quick update on my progress over the last couple of weeks. In terms of modding, I have done a couple of fixes, but nothing major. Mostly I've been focused on learning Godot, and I've made a lot of progress. Perhaps not visible progress in terms of game output, but a lot of progress has been made in terms of my understanding of the engine and what's possible. I switched over to a different project before I was working on my 2D garden planner. Now I'm working on what I call a 3D city builder, which is basically just a simple replica of foundation or of similar city builders. It's got a 3D terrain, it has uh, buildings, and it's going to have some of the same functions as foundation in terms of workplaces, etc. And the idea in building this is that I learn how to make the UI for a city builder, how to make the camera, how to instantiate buildings and have all their functions. Because really at the end of the day, I am mostly interested in city builder type games. And so it makes the most sense for me to build something that I'm familiar with. I have in my Godot setup a number of nodes and I've gone through lots of iterations and refactored many of these. I started out with all of these nodes being separate scenes, and I ended up in a setup in the last few days where they are all in the same scene, just to simplify my source code. So I have a scene called game.scene, and that contains everything that I've built so far, instead of having it in multiple folders. And I suppose the reason for that was that I realized that none of these nodes would ever exist on their own, like the world would always exist within the UI which would always exist within the game. So there was no point in having separate scene files for each of these things. I may go back and change this later as my understanding of Godot evolves, but I think if you're gonna have these objects always be in a hierarchy together and there's no scenario where world would exist outside of the world UI, for example, then it makes sense to have them in the same scene. Obviously, I still have lots of scripts, so you can see I have scripts attached to many different levels in the hierarchy, and that's where I get the object-oriented programming concepts where things are existing within themselves and they interact using signals, or if they're a parent, they can interact with the children. I'm trying to observe some of those good programming practices of not referencing from a child, referencing a parent, and so on. I have my three-dimensional world, I have my light, I have my environment, which at the moment is very uh, simple, and I, I'm happy to keep it this way so far because I haven't needed, you know, trees and rocks and everything. Uh, I have my terrain, which is the colliding mesh which everything sits on. Uh, my camera controller, I've done probably five different iterations of the camera, and I'm still not happy with how it works. It's very difficult to get this camera to work the way I want it to because I'm trying to combine several different functions. The first function is I want the camera to remain level as I move around the world, which it does in my current iteration. I want it to rotate around a point in space, which it does, although it doesn't work great when I zoom in. It rotates too close to the ground. I'd rather it be closer here, but I'm still fine-tuning that. But the thing that I really don't like about the camera at the moment is the collision. So if I go down and I'm moving towards a hill, it collides, but it's very jerky. The movement is not good. And if I happen to be here and I rotate, it does work. Um, but it is possible for me to accidentally go through the terrain into the bottom and the movement is just not very smooth. So. I still have a lot of work to do to change the camera. I've tried different things. I've tried using a kinematic body, which has built-in collision, but that comes with its own problems. Um, and at the moment, it's just a, a simple spatial node that I'm moving around using code and transforms or translations. But I'm not super happy. As you can see, as you rotate, when I'm moving, there's there's some jerkiness in the movement. So I still have long ways to go with the camera, but it is functional and it gets me around the map. Other things that I've built, uh, I spent a lot of time this week with the building system. So this isn't gonna look very impressive, but it actually took me quite a bit of work to figure out how to do this. So it would be easy in Godot just created a node for every building that's going to be in the game, right? So if I have a house, then it's its own node, it has its own mesh, it has its own properties. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to have a building system that was modular in the sense that 
the meshes for the building could be built in Blender in a single file and it could be imported at runtime. So I could add more buildings and then just add them to the list and they would be imported automatically for the Blender export. The other thing was the attributes of the building. I wanted to keep them in a dictionary. So I'll show you what that dictionary looks like where I simply define in a JSON type format, you know, what would be the attributes of each building. And at the moment, I just have some simple attributes like the name, the description, and where is the mesh located. These GLTF files I learned this week are a newish format that supports 3D models. It works really well with Godot and it works well with Blender exports. So I'm using that. In the past with Foundation, I was using .fbx files, which are proprietary. So they're much harder to understand. So by doing it this way, I can define my buildings using this dictionary, which eventually will become its own file, but at the moment it's just embedded in my building manager class. And I can define the buildings, I can create these meshes from Blender, and that way at runtime it loads whatever buildings are in the list and it imports the meshes. There's a small problem with this in that real-time loading of GLTF files is supported in the editor, so when I run it in here it works. But if I export my project to a Windows executable, it doesn't work. And it won't work, I guess, until Godot 4.0 is released. But it's a long ways away for me to have an executable to release to, to anybody else to test. So at the moment, I'm happy with this solution. Another thing that I had to do this week was to get those buildings into the game. So I have a simple menu up here that I'm using for testing. So I've got a file menu where I can remove all the buildings and then I have the list of buildings. It's not super fancy, but it at least allows me to place the buildings. So when the buildings are loaded in from the dictionary and the mesh is imported from GLTF, then it also updates the UI and puts it here. So I have two test buildings at the moment. So this functionality of dragging the building onto the screen and having it semi-transparent, I had worked on that uh, two weeks ago in my proof of concept for this 3D city builder. And if I hold down control, I can rotate the building. Now there is a bug where if I do that, you'll see it flashes over here. So I have to fix that bug at some point, but it does work so I can place the building anywhere on the map and it collides with the terrain wherever my mouse is pointing, which was some code I had to understand and learn how to do. So once I'm ready, when I left, it's waiting for left click. So if I left click, it changes state and it drops the building and changes the material to be the original material. Rather, it, it removes the override material, which was that semi-transparent material. And I've got another test building here. So a shop, place those. So this functionality took the better part of a week to do to understand how to import the buildings, how to put them into the UI, how to rotate them, how to drop them, but it, it all works. And the last thing that I did in relation to this building system was I uh, created the save and load functions. So once I've got my buildings in the configuration that I want, so I'll just put more buildings out here. So I've got my little village here then I'm ready to save this city. And I created a save function. So if I go back to my code, I used a tutorial, the same tutorial that I had accessed before, create a save kind of module. It's very simple. It basically just manages creating the directory where the save will happen and then creating the file. And what it does is it calls on any node that has this tag called save. So in Godot, there's this really useful feature called groups. It's basically tags, text tags that you can add to any node. So I can tag a node with this group name called save. So I'll give you an example. The camera controller has the tag save. So that means that any node that has this tag, the game saver will loop through those and call within each of those nodes a save and load function. So within the camera controller, there's a save and load function called serialize and deserialize, and it packs the variables into a dictionary that then gets passed back to that save game resource and gets saved in the save file. And I really like this system because it decentralizes all the savings. So 
you just have your simple save class, which operates regardless of any other object. And then whenever you're ready for an object to save or load itself, it manages that itself. It passes the information back to the save file and it takes the information from the save file and unpacks it into whatever variable. So in this example, it's just saving a dictionary entry that says, hey, the camera controller entry has a an attribute called camera transform and that's equal to the transform, which is a record of where the camera is positioned and, and how it's rotated. And when the game is loaded, it just takes that same piece of information back from the dictionary and it assigns that piece of information to the current transform. So it will reset the camera to wherever it was when you saved. And for the buildings, I have this building manager and inside the building manager, I have the template buildings. So the buildings that are template for each building. So the house has a template and the shop has its template. And then when they're placed, they're duplicated. So the house template is, is copied and created in the world itself and placed in the world and the templates are never shown. And this has a save and load function as well. So I'm basically just saying, Hey, grab all the, the attributes of the building. So save all these things and serialize each building. And then each building has its own, uh, serialization function. So as you can see, if I go save here and I move somewhere else and I clear the building. So this just deletes all the buildings from the map. If I go to load, I'm back where I was. The buildings are reinstituted. So the serialization just loops through my dictionary and recreates the buildings in exactly the same position that they were in before. And it moves the camera back to the same position it was in before. So that's working really well. And I'm actually really surprised at how easy it is to create save and load functionality. I was actually really scared of <laughs> saving and loading. It just seemed like such an intimidating thing to learn, but it isn't really that complicated. You're just basically creating a dictionary of all the stuff that you want to keep and anything you don't keep, you just reload it at runtime. So the terrain, for example, in this example, I don't have, you know, any, I don't have multiple maps, so I only have one terrain, so I don't have to reload the terrain. So I'm very happy with that and I'm very happy with my build system. It's simple, but effective for a test. And it proves that I can in fact build uh, a city builder, which, you know, I, I tried doing this in unity last year and I was absolutely flummoxed. I could not figure out how to do half this stuff. So I'll show you my Trello board and where I am in this particular learning process. Again, I'm not super focused on actually producing a game, but I am focused on producing the functionality, which then teaches me how to produce the game. So I did the proof of concept, which was to create a basic terrain, a camera, and to be able to place a building. I've worked on all the building stuff that I mentioned before the save and load system. Oh, and I also have a screenshot maker so that when I'm in the game, if I hit F12, I can make screenshots, which I find useful for development just to record my progress. I tried to work on the camera cursor again. I think I'm going to abandon this card. In fact, I have to abandon this card because, uh, my sprint has already finished. So I'm, I'm doing this in sprints, basically saying every week by Sunday night, I have to finish the sprint. So whatever cards make it, make it and whatever doesn't, doesn't. And here I am doing the progress video. It's 5 AM on a Monday. So I'll, I'll include that in the previous sprint. So these are the things that I finished last week and this week I am working on the environment. So I'm interested in learning about how to change the look of the terrain, how to add grass, bushes, rocks. You can imagine all the things I have a sky already, but I may add a more interesting sky and I wanted to do some visual smoothing. So anti-aliasing, I actually already finished that. And there's uh, a couple of settings that you can make in the the project to make it look better. I've also been playing around with the shadows. I'm not totally happy with those yet. And then if I have time, I'll revisit the camera and see if I can get that to work. And in terms of backlog, then if I have a building system and an environment, the next step will be to create people. I'm a little bit nervous about this, to be honest, I'm going to just create a very simple placeholder. So like a capsule shape settler, not a person with any animations. I don't want to do any artwork. I just want to have a representation of a person who can walk around and do stuff. I'm just going to 
work on a very simple behavior where they just wander around near their house. And of course, there's all kinds of other things I haven't documented, but I would start to work on things like buildings where the settler goes to the building and then they go out and gather resources. So that's the progress I've made so far in learning Godot. I'm really, really happy. I continue to have a lot of fun with Godot. You know, with Unity, I would come in in the mornings and just dread, <laughs> dread being able to, to figure out how to do things in Godot. I'm, I'm building a lot of confidence and I really feel every, every morning when I come in, I actually feel pretty confident that no matter what I, I need to do that day, I will find a way to do it. Foundation may be releasing the 1.9 update soon, so I may be going back to do some modding work, but I'm basically waiting until they release that update before I go back to Foundation. But uh, until then, thanks for watching and talk to you soon.